as this developed over time, it would have been better to have called it an administrative scheme openly and to have put a better structure around it. And insofar as, you know, generically I'm the Prime Minister, I'm responsible for the entire government, I take responsibility for that. I totally understand the, the feelings of people who say, well, in respect of the criminal offence and the terrorist offence where a member of my family lost their life, they should not have had the letter, and as a result of this scheme, they got a letter. Or as a result of the misapplication of this scheme, they got a letter. I understand that completely. I simply say two things to you about this. The first is that I defend completely the issuing of these letters to people who the prosecuting authorities have decided were not going to be prosecuted and charged because had we not been doing that, we would have had literally nothing in respect of the demand to deal with the whole of the on the runs issue. And the second thing I would say to you is, and reviewing the papers again as I have over the last few days for, for, for giving evidence here, this issue of on the runs was absolutely critical to the peace process and at certain points became fundamental to it. If I'd literally been saying we're not dealing with this at all in any way at all, I think you can never be sure of these things, but I think it's likely that the process would have collapsed. Well, by, that, do you, by that you mean Sinn Féin would have walked away? Correct. I simply say this to you. The purpose in everything we tried to do was to create peace in Northern Ireland so that there were more victims of terrorism and more families distressed at losing loved ones as a result of that terrorism. Now, when we decided in the Good Friday Agreement that we would release convicted prisoners, no one felt anything other than repugnance at doing that, because you're releasing people from prison who've committed serious criminal offences. But we would not have got a deal in Northern Ireland. We would not have peace unless we had put that provision in the Northern Ireland Agreement. And once you do that, this issue of what you do about people who are so-called on the run, who have not yet been convicted, that has to be dealt with. So uh, I understand the, the depth of the feeling, but I, I do have to emphasize I was dealing with this pretty much week in, week out. And at crucial points of this, this issue was absolutely vital to the continuation of the Northern Ireland peace process. I want to bring this back to the victims, because the victims in all of this have actually been lost. Um, Behind you in that gallery are the victims of the Hyde Park bombing, their family. There's many other victims from Kings Mill and many other massacres across Northern Ireland. Uh, there's people there who are part of the 95 victims, or sorry, 300 victims who uh, the 95 people who receive letters um, are, are, are holding. I wonder if you want to take an opportunity now to turn around to those victims and to apologise to them for the catastrophic error that your government was involved in. I accept full responsibility, because I'm the Prime Minister, I should accept responsibility for everything that happens in a government of which I am the Prime Minister. Yes. Full responsibility for not having put in place a structure for this procedure that might have meant in the Downey case, as Lady Justice Hallett finds, that the letter would not have been sent and therefore the trial would have proceeded. So for that, I take responsibility yes, and I apologize? feel sorry for those people and I apologize to those people who have suffered as a result of that. But I am not going to apologize for sending those letters to those who should have received those letters because without having done that, we would not have a Northern Ireland so, peace process so in place today. So you're apologizing for the error, but not for the process. No, look, these people have suffered enormously you're from what right. has happened. The reason. I spent time and effort, and I think I am justified in saying beyond what any Prime Minister before me or since me has done on Northern Ireland, is so that more victims of terrorism and more families would not suffer. And right at this moment, if we didn't have a Northern Ireland peace process, right at this moment when, as we can see from events elsewhere, we're dealing with this issue of a new form of terrorism, we would still be dealing with terrorism from Northern Mr. Ireland. Mr Blair, today. was your fondness for Mr Adams, did that tarnish or help you lose perspective on the sort of arrangement that needed to be put in place, uh, which made you ask the Attorney General to keep going a step further, step further, when he had already given you advice that this was a step too far? 
I dealt with many people in the Northern Ireland peace process. Jerry Adams, Martin McGuinness, David Trimble, your father Ian, for whom I ended up having a respect because they were people who were prepared to do difficult things in the interests yeah. of peace. Um, and the but reason did you lose we perspective were, because of that fondness? It's not a fondness. You said it's not a fondness. This is what you said. You said in terms of Martin McGuinness and Jerry Adams, they're extremely, uh, they're a, a, an extraordinary couple. Over time, I came to like them greatly. I came to like both greatly, uh, probably more than I should have. These General people who you like greatly were members of the Provisional IRA Army Council, were responsible for taking the decision to blow up Hyde Park, to murder citizens in our nation. You liked them greatly. Did that affect your judgment in dealing with them on this issue? Because they kept pressing you and pressing you and pushing you, and they're nice guys, we're on the sofa together. Was it nice that we could get a deal around this issue of on the runs? It's got nothing to do with whatever <coughs> personal relationship I might have. I like them, okay. don't like them, whatever. You Without think we would have dealing gone back with to this war? issue, we would not have had a Northern Ireland peace process. Now, look, let's be very clear about this, because this is a point of absolute division between us. You would not have voted, in fact, didn't, for the Good Friday Agreement. Right. You would not have supported the provision releasing convicted prisoners, never mind people who might be convicted, convicted prisoners. You would not have voted for that. Well, well, let me just say it's democracy. Right. How, I, no, how, I vote, how I vote is my business. Let's no, turn. No, no, let, let's not sorry. get into no, In this instance, right. it is no, not. No, no, it is not your business. In this instance, it is my business. Because when you're questioning me as the decision maker, yeah. you sit in the decision making seat for a moment. I mean, how many people round this committee, if they'd been negotiating the Good Friday Agreement, would have put their hands up to release convicted killers from prison? Probably not a majority on this committee. But I'm telling you. Without that provision in the yeah. Northern Ireland Agreement, we would not have had we're, we're